Hello, in today's video, we're gonna go over some quick clipper tips. Now, these may help solve a little problem you're having or make your life a little bit simpler in the future. So let's get started. Now, the first tip we're gonna cover here is a single line added to your printer.cfg file that may relieve a common issue that many printers suffer from. If your printer has a mains power bed and uses an SSR to control it, some people may notice that when the heater is on, your lights flicker. Now, that's something you probably don't wanna do. So I'm gonna show you how adding one line to your config here will make it go away. So we're connected to our printer here, and this is a Voron Trident I'm using as an example here. We're gonna to go to our config, so our printer.cfg file here, and we're gonna scroll down till we get to the bed heater section. And you're gonna add a line that's called PWM underscore cycle underscore time. And then the number you add after that depends on where you live in the world. Now, if you live where the power runs at 50 Hertz, you're going to add 0.02. And if you live where the power is 60 Hertz, you're going to add 0.01666. And what this is, this is essentially telling the heater to run at the same frequency as your power runs at. So since your lights run at that same frequency too, it should pretty much eliminate the flicker issue or drastically reduce it. Now, how do we get that number? It's simply one divided by 50 if you live in a 50 hertz zone or one divided by 60 if you live in a 60 hertz zone. And then afterwards, it's a simple save and restart and your lights should no longer flicker. Now, let's just go back to that printer.config file there. Uh, we have a lot of stuff in that file. It's getting quite large. So why don't we go ahead and take a moment here to simplify things and organize it. So before we start this though, I'm gonna recommend that you download and save your printer.cfg file. This is a good habit to start doing, is once you get your printer configured the way you like it, go ahead and download and back up your printer.cfg and any other relevant files. Clipper does run on a Raspberry Pi most of the time, which uses an SD card for storage. There's always a chance that it can get corrupted. The last thing you wanna to have to do is go through and reset up your printer and have to go through all that headache again. So make a backup of your config files just to ensure that you do have something to restore from. Now on to making our printer.cfg file a little bit cleaner. So let's go ahead and break out our macros. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of them. Copy and then I'm gonna delete them. So now we don't have any macros in our printer.cfg file. Let's save and close it. And then I'm gonna create a new file. And I'm gonna call this, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm just gonna call it macros.cfg. Whatever you decide to call it, it does have to end in .cfg though. Create, and we have it here. And I'm gonna put all my macros in this file. Save and close. Now we're gonna go back to the printer.cfg file. And you can add this anywhere, uh, but you're gonna add, open bracket, include, macros.cfg or whatever the file you decide to call .cfg and then close bracket and then save and restart and there you have it now if all goes well you shouldn't notice any change in your printer but now you have all your macros in a separate file so you can go and break out things such as LED configurations into a separate file now just to help keep things organized and streamlined. It doesn't affect anything in terms of performance or how the printer runs, but it does help a little bit when it comes to just kind of keeping things organized. And then also I have another quick single line trick for you. Now this has to do with when it comes to flashing your controller board. If your printer uses a board such as an SKR where you have to flash the board with an SD card to install the firmware. When it comes to doing the make process, normally you would have to go through the make menu config, generate that file, and then you have to use a program such as WinSCP or other program to pull that file off of the Raspberry Pi onto your computer, and then transfer it from the computer to an SD card, which you can transfer to the controller board. So why don't we remove a step there? After you've gone and run the make command, for the menu config and you have your clipper.bin file, you're gonna run this one command here that's gonna move that file into the same folder that your printer.cfg is. Now I'll have this command in the description below, but after you run it and you go into your uh, folder where your printer.cfg is, you should see your firmware.bin file. So now you just right click download and you have it. So now you can just drag and drop it onto an SD card, rename it to whatever you have to rename it to, install it into your 
SKR or other controller board and flash it. Now, the last thing I'm gonna cover is not specifically a clipper issue, but I'm gonna to touch on it because it affects all 3D printers and it's a common question I get asked about. And you may have seen this come up. Have you ever run a new print after canceling a print or restarting a print and you've gotten the error warning move out of range? Now, this issue comes up because of the way 3D printers interpret g-code how movement commands are based and the fact that it remembers previous commands or states so for those that don't know there are two common types of movement with cnc machines and 3d printers you have g90 movements and g91 movements now a g90 movement is an absolute movement so what that means is the easiest way to interpret this is your 3d printer is a grid let's say 0 to 300 and 0 to 300 with 0 0 being your front left corner and 300 300 being your back right corner so if you tell your printer while it is in a g90 movement state to do x10 y10 it will move to 10 millimeters up and 10 millimeters right from the front left of the printer if you tell it to move x300 y300 it'll move all the way to that back right corner now G91 is an incremental movement. If you have your printer tool head at the middle of the bed at say 150, 150, and you tell it after running a G91 command to move X10, Y10, it will move 10 millimeters to the right and 10 millimeters to the back. So the one movement, G90, is based off of a fixed zero, zero point, whereas G91 is a movement based off of where the tool head is when it runs that specific movement command. Hi, horrible webcam quality editing Nero here. Um, just realizing that when I recorded this, I kind of goofed with the description, so let's go over it again. What I'm basically getting at here is when you wrote your starting G code, most people assume they are working in a G90 environment. So if you write, you know, G1, X10, Y10, you're going to move to the front left of your printer bed. But if you don't have that G90 command and you're starting G code and your slicer was operating under G91, which some do, what can happen is if you cancel a print, your printer will still be in that G91 state. So if your starting G code is in G1, X10, Y10, instead of moving to that front of the bed, you're gonna move 10 millimeters to the right, 10 millimeters backwards. So depending on what that actual command could be, it could be driving your print head off the printer. So for example here, you can see how my starting G code here for print start, before I do any movement, I have a G90 command because I want my printer moving using absolute coordinates. So if that is an error that you are getting, make sure you go through and ensure your starting G code macros are corrected so you don't get that issue in the future. And then if you're not getting that error, just consider that some uh, useful information about how G-Code works with 3D printers and CNC machines. Now, another thing to keep in mind while we're also in here looking at my start G-Code is that the velocity or this F number right here in my first movement command, the velocity is also remembered from a previous input. So what that means is if you have a list of movements, but only that first line has a F value in it, it will reuse that F value until another F value is introduced. So again, if you cancel a print, mid print, and start again, and your starting G code has a very fast or a very slow movement that you did not anticipate, that's because it's remembering that previous velocity value. So you may wanna go ahead and add a F value for your starting G code to ensure that that first movement is always at the speed you want it to be. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, if you do have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. I figured I'd go over some common tips and tricks for Clipper and help expand your knowledge of how G-Code works. If you wanna help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description as well. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the live streams in the future. And on your way out, make sure you like that smash button. I hope you learned something new today. And as always, have yourselves a great day. Cheers.